What's going on, everybody? Hey, guys. Welcome back to East Africa with Willie and Rachel. We are super excited to be sitting with you again, praise God. Yes, we are. So, Rachel, we're continuing to talk about righteousness. Mm -hmm. And I'm, we're going to continue on the scriptures that we read on the last teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Romans chapter 3, verse 21. It says, But now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. And I love this because, okay, first of all, is there anything wrong with the law? No. The law says in Romans 7, 13, the law is holy, just, and good. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong. They're like, if there's a commandment, do not commit adultery, do, you know, this type of stuff, those are good commandments. Mm -hmm. God's not saying that because he hates the adulterer. He's saying that because adultery destroys yeah. families. Sin. Like, for the wages Thank of you. sin is death. It, and it, that's just not eternal. That is in your life now. In your life, <laughs> praise God. I mean, you know, like, it, yeah, sin just is destructive yes. in every way. And so that is still true. However, righteousness does not come through looking at the commandment yeah. and then going and trying to get good. As a matter of fact, Romans chapter 3 says that we are all under yeah. sin. You can go to James chapter 2, and it says that if you've... Uh, I think it's James 2.10. Mm -hmm. Anyways, it says that if you have broken the law in one area, yeah. then you're a transgressor of the law. The law doesn't come like right. there's like this, like sectioned off to where you try to do good. And as long as you did 90%, no, no. <laughs> if you did, even were able to do 99% good and yet fail in one area, you're literally not righteous. Nope, you failed. So the whole point of this righteousness is the fact that God made a way for us to receive this righteousness based upon Jesus' fulfillment of the law yeah. and his fulfillment of who he, uh, not just fulfillment, but actually who he was and who he is. And I just want to say this. And we uh, receive go, that. Go no, ahead. that's what I was going to say. And that we, we receive yes. that. It's not something we go earn. Yeah. And again, because some people actually have this idea that the law was given that you would actually live by it yeah. perfectly. Mm -hmm. and, and that wasn't the point of the law. Yeah. That's the opposite. The point mm -hmm. of the law was brought forth so that you would have a tutor to Christ. In fact, it would actually show you yep. that you were not good enough. Um, yeah. Do you have that scripture? Because yeah, I'm going to pull it yeah, up I right here. You might have Hebrews 7. Yeah. But Galatians the, is where I'm going. Okay. So, yeah. Either. Hebrews is great. Galatians mm -hmm. is great. Um, the point of the law was to say, look at you. You can't make it. You need Jesus. Yeah. So, not go and live by the law. Yeah. So we were, we were in the old, like for instance, in the old, what we call the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, um, in your Bible before Matthew. And you, what you're going to have is you're going to see the purpose of the law here in Galatians chapter 3, verse 19. It says, what purpose then does the law serve? It was added because of transgression mm -hmm. till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And this is taught going back to uh, Genesis chapter 12, the promise to Abraham to right. have an heir. And in him, yeah. all the nations of the earth would be blessed. That was a promise of Jesus coming. Right. The law came in after that, and it says it was added because of transgression. Now, the, uh, let me go to verse 21. Is the law then against the promises of God? Certainly not. Mm -hmm. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, Truly, righteousness would have been by the law. But the scripture has confirmed all under sin that the promise by faith in Jesus might be mm -hmm. given to those who believe. Yep. But before faith came, we were kept under guard by the law, kept for the faith which would afterward be revealed. Yeah. Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ. That we might be justified by faith. But after the faith has come, we are no longer under that tutor. Right. So we're not under the law. You can say it like this. Romans chapter 10 verse 4 says that Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. There's a lot. There's still. The law is just and holy and all, and all that. It's great. However, when it comes to being right with God... When it comes to you being accepted as a child in receiving the adoption as a son of God, it does you no good. Like it cannot profit you in that area. And so like someone who's not even born again, if they just tried to live according to the law and if they said, you know what, I'm not going to commit adultery, will it benefit them in this life? Yeah, it will. If you stay out of adultery, it will literally better benefit your family because that is a truth, whether you're born again or not born again. But if you want to have relationship with God, well, then you're going to have to disconnect from just trying to live according to the law. You're going to have to say yes yep. to what Jesus has done and yes. now allow his life to live out of you. So 
do on 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 uh, some of the issues are they exactly the same? Yeah, they are. Praise God. We have certain New Testament commandments. As a matter of fact, Jesus said that if you love God and love your brother, and that's like the fulfillment mm. of all the commandments are wrapped up into yeah. those. Because if I'm loving my wife, I'm not gonna go commit adultery. Right. Adultery is selfish. Thank you. And so some of these things overlap. However, it's a completely different understanding. Right. Because if you're viewing according to the law and trying to live according to that, you'll fall into condemnation, self righteousness, and all this other muck. Mm -hmm. But if you live live through Christ, some of the things, that, well, again, will still look the same on the outside, okay. but the life is being right. given to you to live that rather yeah. than you trying to go impress God. Yeah. And that is an entirely different way of living life. Completely different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. So I love that because you know, the law, sure. Does it give the world a standard mm -hmm. of, you know, yeah. what is right? Mm -hmm. It does, mm -hmm. but it doesn't give you power. No. And that's nope. the difference yep. that we find that the word tells us. Yes, so it doesn't give you the Holy Spirit. Doesn't give you the Holy mm -mm. Spirit. Doesn't give you power over mm -mm. sin. Mm -mm. Doesn't give you relationship with God. Mm -mm. What happened in Christ could never happen through the law. Yeah. But what was established in Christ for us was power. Yep. Amen. We now in the relationship through faith, mm -hmm. not of the law, not of works, not of us saying that we had anything yeah. with our goodness to bring to the table. Mm -hmm. We received power Amen. to live the life. Amen. And I already mentioned that, so um, that, let me just look right here, that those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness yeah. reign in life. What did I tell you that was? Romans, Romans. Uh, 5, 16. Mm -hmm. That those who receive the abundance of grace, yeah. And the gift, free gift, mm. of righteousness mm. will reign. Hallelujah. That's power. That's, That's power. authority in Christ yeah. to live in this life. Did it say that those who walk according to the law and walk perfectly and all mm. of that will receive the abundance of grace and, the, and reign no. in life and no. have all these things? It didn't. Yeah. Because it couldn't give you power. Amen. Amen. That's, that, <laughs> yeah, no, keep going. But, That's so but what we receive through grace and through righteousness empowers us. Amen. It establishes us as heirs and sons and daughters. Yeah. Because a servant mm -hmm. or a slave can be gotten rid of, mm -hmm. right? They're on the outside. You can let them go mm -hmm. anytime for yeah. anything. But when you have been established as a son or a daughter, mm -hmm. you are forever yeah. in the house. Amen. You are forever in the throne room Amen. with God. And this is true humility because it's, it's, it's from a carnal, fleshly standpoint, it's easy, isn't it, to kind of look and if we could just walk perfect and just say, oh, finally, I know I'm righteous. But this is a humility standpoint yeah, to where you have yeah, to literally is. trust God. Oh, it's so good. I want to go back to the scripture that mm -hmm. I read, that I quoted a minute ago and read it. It says, uh, this is talking about comparing the Israelites and the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. And Paul says, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and the seeking to establish their own righteousness mm. have not submitted to the righteousness that of God. That is so good, and really. The, and then it says, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Listen, the righteousness of God is not something you attain. Yeah. It's not something you go yeah. earn. It's something you literally submit to. Oh, So man, here it is. is so good. God has come. Uh, uh, Jesus has lived, died, yes. and rose from the dead for you, paid for your sins, literally paid mm -hmm. for your sins. And for you to now receive this righteousness, you have to submit to it. You have to say, Lord, I'm just going to let this gift mm -hmm. come into me. I'm going to receive your life. I'm going to receive what you've done for me. Yeah. And I'm going to stop striving. And I'm going to stop trying to go out there and earn yeah. my own righteousness. I'm going to submit to your yeah. righteousness. So yes, Lord, I want to live for you. Yes, yeah. Lord, I want to do right. Yes, Lord, I want these things. But the way that power source come is going on, to come so is by me saying, Lord, I submit to you. So if you mess up, do you say, Lord, I'm sorry? Yeah, yeah. you repent. Repentance is good. Turning, Turning from, turn from that, that thing, thing back to the Lord. Yes. It, but he didn't turn from you. Ooh. And so you have to see Preach. that part of walking, even in the outward righteousness of, of like living right, is keeping yourself in your heart in that submitted area where, Lord, I know I'm righteous and I know that you love me. And I'm going to let that flow out. So good. All right, you guys, we're going to end it right there. But mm -hmm. hey, send us your prayer requests and messages on WhatsApp, and we will see you next time.